Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. Tesla just reinvented the car all over again. We do hear this a lot in the tech industry, right? We reinvented the phone. We reinvented the computer. But Tesla did literally just reinvent the car. If you think you know the Cybertruck because you have seen its crazy design of this beast, well, the most crazy part of this truck you will find underneath that bulletproof stainless steel crazy looking exterior. You can hate all you want on this thing, but when you find out what kind of engineering went into this truck, I think your mind will be blown. Yes. Nothing about this truck comes from the old guys. Everything about this truck is new and it's all better. It's all from scratch. It's all brand new and it's all better. It really is truck 2.0. It does everything well, as reviewers of this car have said. So let's check this new reinvention of what a car should even be and let's dive right in. So after the delivery event, people have been up in arms about the price. That was not what Tesla promised, and that Tesla didn't come with the 500 miles version. But let's get these two things out of the way so we can get to the real fun stuff about the Cybertruck's engineering feasts. So yes, the price is more than they originally planned, just like everyone else, like Ford Lightning, the Silverado, Rivian that almost got in trouble because they wanted to raise the prices even for the people that have already paid. So it is not just Tesla that has raised the prices. Everyone has, even your average price of a new car in the US has gone up from about 38,000 in 2019 to 48,000 in 2023. The average price has gone up $10,000 and people expect Tesla Cybertruck to stay at the same price as four years ago. Are you kidding me? So if we take the $40,000 from 2019 and just add the inflation into the price, it should cost roughly $48,000 today. But then we have also got this $7,500 tax credit since the Cybertruck was revealed. So that is a discount that people buying the single or dual motor will get. So for the price to be the same today as in 2019, the single motor should cost something like $55,500. But it costs $61,000. Oh no, the price has gone up $5,500. <laughs> so when we look at the price, it is not even something we should really talk about. As we can also see here, when we compare it to the Rivian and the Ford, they are basically the same price. Rivian is a bit more expensive, but not much. But with the Cybertruck, you will get so much more. But we will get back to all that good stuff in a minute. And Tesla has over 2 million pre-orders. <laughs> they could pretty much price this beast as they like, as the demand is off the chart. But compared to the competition, the price is actually very good. Then there is the range. Yes, Tesla didn't come with the 500 miles of range version, but they did come with the 200 miles version they promised and they actually over delivered with the dual motor that has 340 miles of range instead of the 300 miles they showed at the reveal four years ago. But no, we didn't get the 500 miles of version. 
But I think Tesla just realized this was insane, just as they did with the Model S Plaid Plus that they decided not to do after all, as it was just an overkill. As Elon has said many times, they could easily make a 600 mile EV if they wanted to, but it would not handle very well and be very expensive because of all those batteries and the average driver in the US drives something like 40 miles a day. So with the ability to fill up at home or at a supercharger, the range really doesn't matter that much. As we also saw with Dave that bought the Lucid because he thought it would be the ultimate road tripping car because of the long range, but because of the charging infrastructure sucked, he got range anxiety with the Lucid, which he didn't get with his Tesla Model 3. So I think Tesla just realized it makes no sense to make a Cybertruck with a 200 kilowatt hour battery as they planned in the beginning to satisfy 0.0% who might need this. Why make a car for the 0.0% of the market and the 99.9% .9 need to pay for those extra battery and carry around an oversupply every single day? So maybe this is why we didn't get the 500 mile range version, but you can get a 470 mile range version if you really need that range because you might be towing stuff. You can get that with the battery extender package that gets fitted in the back of the bed. So if you really need it, you can still get it, very close to the 500 anyway, but to everyone else, I think 320 and 340 miles is going to be just fine. I have driven the Model 3 for almost 170,000 kilometers, so more than 100,000 miles now, and I have never thought, oh, I wish my car had a couple of hundred miles more. <laughs> so this is more than enough. So I don't really think the price or the range is such a big issue as many people want it to look like. But that is just two facts about the Cybertruck, the range and the price. But that is the least fun specs about this truck. So let's get some of all the engineering marvels this truck has. Because people can hate all they want. But the people who has actually driven the Cybertruck for a test review are all very impressed with the truck like Top Gear or Marcus Brownlee or Jason from Hargitay that was completely blown away by this truck, saying everything in the truck is completely new and is all better, saying it does everything well, and why has steering not always been this way? It's all from scratch, it's all brand new, and it's all better, it really is, truck 2.0. So what is he so impressed by? Well, firstly, Tesla Cybertrucks come with the first of the kind, 100% of the car being built on 48 volt architecture that makes the car much simpler to produce and lighter, so it needs less batteries and reduce the wiring and the copper that is needed for the car by 75%. This is something no one else has been able to get to market in a production vehicle. We have seen some hybrids that have been using a 48 volt motor, but everything else in the car was just 12 volt. And we have been using 12 volt for 70 years, even though our cars have increased their electric equipment quite a bit over the last 70 years. But no one have really been able to make a 48 volt architecture before. But now Tesla has shown the whole car industry how to do it. Literally, because Tesla has sent the PDF memo to all CEO of all car companies in the world. And it says how to build an EV with a 48 volt architecture. So Tesla just said, fuck this, we're done. And literally, I love this, showed me, sent me a copy of the document that I'm under NDA and not allowed to share. But I can say it's called how to engineer a 48 volt vehicle. They wrote a PDF and sent it to the CEO of every other car company and all the suppliers. And they're like, the, the point being like, <laughs> fuck you, like enough, enough shit or get off the pot. If you're not going to do your homework, we're doing it. Um, and it was, it's, I read it. It's very simple, but it's a bunch of learnings about like, okay, this is best practice. This is best practice. We found this, we found this, we found this, go forth and do it, but we're doing our own shit. And they basically said, we're, we're done waiting and we're sick of suppliers not doing this. So we're just making 48 volt everything. Catch up. The balls. <laughs> the, the balls indeed. But another thing the 48 volt architecture has enabled Tesla to do is steer by wire. So there is nothing linking the steering wheel 
to the tires. Only when you turn it on, it will turn the wheels. This also means that the car turns the wheels differently depending if you're driving fast and don't want the wheel to turn as much or are at a construction site where you want the car to be as maneuverable as possible and together with the back wheels can also turn the turning radius of this beast it's much smaller than the f-150 lightning or the rivian it is the most maneuverable pickup truck in the world jason even took it on a go-kart racetrack that they said it would not be able to do but it did it with ease and as jason said after have been driving with it for a couple of days it's a hell of a car. It drives really well. The suspension is great. Makes you wonder why steering wasn't always like this. It's smooth. It's fast as hell. It does everything well. So Tesla has reinvented the whole electric architecture in the car and is the first to bring steer by wire to market in a production vehicle. So again, doing something the other old guys has never done before. The Cybertruck also runs on 800 volt. That is the first for Tesla as all the other Teslas runs on 400 volt, but that is not something Tesla is first to market with. Hyundai, Lucid and Porsche has already 800 volt in their cars, but they still only have the 12 volt architecture. So they still work with four times the amount of current in the car. So they still need much bigger wires than Tesla does and therefore have a lot more copper in their car. And it will be the safest car you can be in in a crash thanks to his hard stainless steel. It is of course a Tesla after all, even though there isn't a single Tesla locker inside or outside the car. After a crash test that totals most cars, the Cybertruck will be back on the road with two new doors, airbags, and some trim. Don't forget, this is the company who made the Model S, which not only broke the record for the safest vehicle ever tested, but was so strong it actually broke the testing equipment and then broke the scoring system by earning 5.4 stars out of a possible 5.0. The Model X, too, broke its test when they couldn't get it to roll over to measure rollover safety. Then the Model 3 beat them both, becoming the safest car ever tested. And then the Y beat it too. And the strong body and huge giga casting makes the torsional rigidity greater than the Porsche 911. A normal Ford F-150 pickup has almost no torsional rigidity. The Ford Maverick has 4,400 and the Cybertruck has 43,000. Yeah, sorry Ford, but you really have to find yourself a new slogan. Build tough just sounds so hollow now. Your truck is not tough. The Cybertruck, that is real tough. The Cybertruck makes the Ford pickup looks like it's made out of cardboard. Yes, this beast will not break down in the middle or dent or rust like a fragile Ford pickup truck. How would you feel if I kicked your car? That's fine. Go on, kick it like you mean it. <laughs> that, just, just One look look at that. It's all fine. <laughs> just brush it off. Here we go. <laughs> One last time for good measure. <laughs> Sorry, Tesla. <laughs> it has a truly lockable bed that is strong enough for Matt from Kawao to jump on. Because look, look at that, it's tough as you like. This truck is made to be used on a construction site. It maneuvers better around the site. And if you hit something like a brick wall, it does not scratch your pretty paint or dent your door. Ford should probably change their slogan to we build pickup trucks like we have always done. Because build tough just went out the window. That title now belongs to Tesla. Another thing with the Cybertruck is that it of course comes with 4680 cell. But to make sure that even though Tesla now switched to an 800 volt architecture, they still need to be able to charge at Tesla's old superchargers that is made with a 400 volt architecture. But Tesla has made a great solution for that as well. But to be backwards compatible with all the other old 400 volt chargers, there's a switch in there that's the coolest thing in the world that takes them from all of them in series to two in parallel to two in series. So now you can charge at 350 kilowatts or whatever the, the max output is, two batteries at the same time, hmm. which is 
another like poof why didn't anyone else think of this mm -hmm. um like for example lucid when you're driving to charge a lucid on a 400 volt charger it has to go through the wonder box which means it's limited to 50 kilowatts well not a problem here. And because of Tesla's new 4680 cells together with the 40 volt and 800 volt architecture, this thing never gets tired. Like Jason said, they drew this thing down the quarter mile again and again and again and again. And it did the quarter mile in 11 seconds flat every single time and always did a 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Just insane. Even when they only had 30% left in the battery, it still made a 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. This truck will just never stop working for you. And they also put every other automakers to shame with its control area network speed or CAN speed, which is basically the car's computer system. The most common rate of a CAN is 500 kilobits per second and is used in the automotive environments. But Tesla put in a gigabit CAN for the Cybertruck. So just so everyone knows the difference here, one gigabyte is one million kilobytes so Tesla's system is about 2,000 times, not 2,000%, but 2,000 times faster than any other automaker's control area network. And because it's so fast, they can control everything through it. They only have like five models in the car that are talking to each other through the can and don't have to have all this cross car wiring connecting everything. It just runs through the can and therefore has this 75% less wires as we talked about that you will find in your F-150 Lightning. The Cybertruck is basically uh, like, a, like a MacBook Pro and all the other cars is not even a computer yet. They are still the flip phone. Tesla is literally embarrassing the entire car industry with this truck. But holy shit, what went into this is like, I, I would hang myself if I worked for a traditional car company right now. I, out, of, <laughs> out of sheer embarrassment. Like when they start pulling this thing apart, their mind is gonna be blown to the point of like, why do we even come to work every day? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, a seismic shift. They are so far behind. It will take them more than a decade to come out with anything that can match what the Cybertruck is when it comes to engineering. And the thing that went into making this Cybertruck is just madness. And Tesla didn't even have to do it because they had like 2 million reservations just because the way it looked. But Tesla just can't help themselves making something completely over the top. And Elon wanted to make the future look like the future so they made it look like the future but they also made this the best and most usable pickup truck on the market nothing can run away from it <laughs> nothing had the 48 volt architecture and two battery packs with 800 volt architecture that can charge on both system 800 or 400 or steer by wire making it the most maneuverable truck in the world and it can out tow any other pickup truck out there in truck pulling and it can tow 11,000 pound and you can put more than a ton in the bed and you can fold up the rear seats to give even more cargo space or get some of the cool accessories to just get some cool storage room underneath the seats. And because the doors open all the way, you can put huge things in there. So the Rivian might have their gear tunnel that is also very cool, but it's there whether you want it or not. But Tesla has this huge cargo space that is bigger than the gear tunnel inside the car if you need it. But if you want to seat three people instead, you can also do that and still have cargo space underneath the seats. And even though it looks like a brick, it's even more aerodynamic than a Bugatti Chiron. It is the toughest thing on the freaking planet. It makes the F-150 look like it's made of cardboard. So Tesla wanted this thing to be a the pickup truck the future of the pickup truck. The others may not copy the looks because no one else has the balls of Tesla to do this to make something this different and polarizing. But everything inside the truck, they have to copy or they will simply be looked at as a Nokia phone with their 12 volt architecture, slow ass can system, no steer by wire and you have to turn your steering wheel like four times to make a U-turn on a construction site and still don't turn as sharp as a Cybertruck can. It makes you wonder why steering wasn't always like this. Tesla just made Ford's and GM's pickup trucks 
obsolete. Tesla even had the balls to send out the PDF telling them all how to make a 48 volt architecture, telling the old guys, come on, try to catch up, we will even help you. You can criticize this thing all you want, but there is nothing out there that comes even close to the engineering feast this truck is. And as James from Hargitay said, I would hang myself if I worked at a traditional car company right now. Like he said, when they start to pull this thing apart, their mind is going to be blown away. Yeah, if Toyota thought the Model Y was a work of art, just wait until they see the engineering that went into the Cybertruck. Like Jason said, why should they even come to work every day? And remember, he's not a Tesla fanboy, quite the opposite, but he's an automotive journalist, an engineer, and a petrol head, which petrol head has just been blown away by the Cybertruck. I know many are saying this is not such a big deal for the car industry. The next generation vehicle from Tesla will be the big thing. It will, for the volume and for the size of Tesla, but it's not going to rip up the asphalt off the road or be a crazy beast. It's going to be a little boring compact car for the true mass market. Nothing will change the car industry and the look of the roads as the Cybertruck will. The halo effect of this car is going to be off the chart and no one else will make a copy because they don't even know how to do it. But some of all the engineering that has gone into the Cybertruck will come down to the next generation vehicle like the 48 volt architecture steer by wire to simplify things and also get brake by wiring so they don't need those wires throughout the car to the brakes. So Tesla can actually do their unbox production method and make the front and the rear of the car separately and then just put them all together afterward without having to really worry about the wiring in the car. So this will be a huge thing for the next generation vehicle as well, in cutting cost and making it as simple to produce as possible. And Tesla will have a car with all of this technology in a small, compact, form factor coming off the assembly line in something like two years, the others don't even know how to do all of this yet. So sure, Volkswagen might come out with their $25,000 compact ID too, but that will just be as uncompetitive as they are today in two years time as Volkswagen have set themselves, because what Tesla is coming out with will be something completely new in every single way like the Cybertruck. Even the production method and the ID2 will just be a smaller version of the already outdated and uncompetitive flip phone of an ID3 of today. I know many are saying no one will buy this as a work truck, but I think people that start to realize all the benefits there is with this cyber truck over anything else, like the much bigger bed than the F-150 Lightning, it can tow more, it can carry more, it can steer by wire, so it's more maneuverable than any other truck out there, it has a better turning radius than all the other guys, and you don't have to worry about driving into stuff at the construction site as it doesn't dent the rust, because Tesla has made this special stainless steel alloy, even though it's very tough, very, very tough, it's also light. This stainless steel beast weighs less than the Rivian. That is not as tough as a Cybertruck. The clearance of the Cybertruck is almost twice as much as the Lightning. <laughs> the Model Y is as capable of off-roading as the F-150 Lightning. The Cybertruck can change 12 inches from the highest to the lowest clearance. So the Cybertruck can change in clearance in inches more than what the Lightning even have. <laughs> yes, the Cybertruck is taking this to a whole new level. It has adaptive air suspension and the Lightning has just spring suspension. It's stronger, more powerful. It does bi-directional charging and all that good stuff. It has access to Tesla's 23,000 superchargers in the US and Canada, whereas everyone else only has access to 12,000 of those and in 2024. The Ford has a bigger battery but less range and can only charge with half the charging speed as the Cybertruck and the dual motor is the same price as the Ford Lightning Lariat. But looking down the list here of what this truck can do just make the Ford look so old school and outdated. People that would use this truck for work will look at the numbers, the specs, the capability, the strength and find out the Cybertruck is not just the same price but it's way better value for money.
And I think when people realize all of this, they don't care how it looks. They just like to get the most bang for their buck. And with the Cybertruck, it is not just the best bang for your buck. It's simply just the best. It does everything well and it's all better. It's all from scratch. It's all brand new. And it's all better. It does everything well. As Steve Jobs once says, the product always wins. And I think people just need to get over the perception of the Cybertruck because of the way it looks. But as Jason said, he thought he would hate it. But after test driving it for just a couple of days, he loved it. But I really did go into this whole experiment kind of hating the Cybertruck, hating everything it stood for, kind of hating the way it looked, the idea of all the excess, and I came away from it, like, loving Respecting it. Respecting it. No, loving it. So now we really have some benchmarks to see how many years the other guys are behind Tesla. When will the others come with a 48 volt architecture in their cars? When will the others have steer by wire? When will they have a gigabit control area network? Then we will know how many years they are behind Tesla. And for us Europeans, Elon did say on X that the Cybertruck is very likely to come to Europe. And Brian from My Tesla Weekend was at a party with some Tesla employees and really got some juicy details about the truck he shared with Jan from Tesla Fix in a video. And one thing they found out was that Tesla team has already been working on getting this beast to Europe for 10 months. So they are really trying. So there is a very, very good chance it will get over here, maybe with some few changes to get approved but we have to wait and see but tesla is working on it so this is very cool and that is also another benefit of steer by wire that makes it very easy to make a left hand or right hand drive car they don't need to change a whole lot of wires they just put the steering wheel on the other side and boom done <laughs> so there is always going to be haters out there about anything tesla does but so far, from the people that has actually test drove it and learned about the engineering that has gone into this thing, well, so far, there is not a bad review about the Cybertruck. They all either liked it or loved it. Some people hate it, some people love it. I'm in the love it camp, I really do like the look of it, but I like unusual vehicles. I would really like one of these. In fact, I'm gonna try and buy one. I've got an order in, we'll see if I can buy one and ship it back to the UK. But one thing is for sure, the automotive industry will never be the same again. So coming in here with a truck that's one of the lightest in this group, if not the lightest, and out pulling everybody else really says something about the capabilities of the vehicle. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.